All right. Hello, everyone. Back to babbling. I'm probably going to go back to the original inspiration called Babbling Moon. Um, so, we've had enough time to let Wakanda Forever breathe, uh, where a lot of haters jumped on and started hating on it, and a lot of people who loved it and dissected it jumped on and did their thing. Um, again, I don't hate it, but I don't think it's, like, amazing. So, it's time for me to, like, kind of dissect it in my own way of thinking. Um, so let's kind of do a weird recap of the movie. We deal with the passing of T'Challa in the first movie, and in the very beginning of the movie, and very quickly shown that Sherry has retreated into herself, um, just gone into her work. Her mother, the queen, uh, is dealing with a lot of outside forces. And in just a moment of just reflection on how they are kind of like through the grief, you see that Shiri has not moved on yet. With the increasing tax on uh, the Wakandan centers, it's said that move outside of that and start looking at it. And that's where we start seeing, that's where we first notice Namor's attack. And then later, Namor ends up having a meet, uh, having breaking through Wakanda's defenses and brings up the ultimatum, you know, join us by by giving up Riri, who is the scientist who created the device that the text verbatim. Siri, uh, Siri and Okoye go to get Riri, but they're captured. We get to see Namor's world. But Nakia saves them. And then last, Namor attacks Wakanda. And the queen dies. I'm going to put a spoiler warning on the beginning of this. I should really do that first. <laughs> All right. Which leads into Siri becoming the Black Panther. Now, what was the problem with this that, I, that bugged me? The connections to all the characters didn't feel right. Riri kind of just had this situation where she was just not really present in all of this. Namor's deeper motivation is not Killmonger. Killmonger had a perfect understanding. It, it actually, he really kind of got us thinking maybe he's right, right? Um, and the lack of roles for Namor's generals. I said before that there's no balance. There's no reflection of Wakanda and its people with Namor. Namor. When this should be a whole story about reflection. like, um, So what if it's possible to kind of tweak it a bit and fix it, you know? Not by rewriting like everyone else. The big thing I hate about rewrites is the fact people try to rewrite an entire section of the story. Um, kind of ruining the actual point of the plot. Right? I mean, what is the point of the plot? 
reflecting loss. Let's try to keep all of this intact, but introduce different stuff, right? So after the funeral, how about we start with this? After the funeral, Shuri, Shuri, um, doesn't stay in Wakanda. In the, in the original movie, she stays in Wakanda, doubling down on her research. But what if in this situation, she's actually at one of the centers? Preferably at the center, uh, I think, Oakland is where um, Killmonger was, where that center was. In a way, it's calling back that moment, um, that last moment in the movie, in the Black Panther movie, where she and um, T'Challa was uh, deciding maybe we should make a research center, an outreach center here. Um, so after this whole incident, Shiri actually, Shiri actually does the exact same thing she does. Double down on the research, but instead of in Wakanda, she does it outside of Wakanda. But also, is a professor. At maybe, not MIT, but something close to where where he is they know each other not personally it's more of it's just simply a professor student type of situation she's just excelling um siri kind of sees herself in her but never really interacts doesn't want to get too close simple as that so this is a general thing we introduce riri really early in the story so we have a general an understanding of uh what her re relationship is towards the bigger narrative in the, in the original movie, she was just a MacGuffin. Sadly, she was just a MacGuffin. That's all she is. Um, she's the thing everyone goes to to get. And this, we're keeping the MacGuffin angle. But we're giving her a deeper connection with everyone around her. So in this, even though the connection is very simple, she's a student of Shiri. She at least is something to Shiri. But it also gives her a some connection, closer connection to vibranium and how to study it and how to find it. Unbeknownst to Shuri, Riri has created the device, has created some of the components needed for detect, uh, detecting vibranium, uh, vibranium. I'm saying it wrong, but no. Cut to the sea. After the whole thing with, the, the, with you know, France and America and blah, 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 blah. Keep all that in there. Boom. Cut to the sea. Don't automatically cut to the attack. Cut to what the divers are doing underwater. And the divers are actually mining the metal. And in a way, they accidentally kill one of... They kill one of the they kill like a person in Namewares Village or something like that right this sparks an attack they're not just automatically going after someone it's a result of the Americans French whatever no no it's Americans it was the American drilling site that's a result of the Americans also going after something in the sea, resulting in killing someone by mistake. Or, well, who knows? So now it's just not just, I'm defending my land. You guys crossed over. You, you, you drew first blood. I'm going after you. So now you have him more sympathetic. All right? Now, what you do with this moment, right? is before you cut to anything else, you immediately start a follow up the attack. Ooh, one or two things you could do. Sorry, so we're gonna do one or two things. You could follow the attack with Namor honoring the dead, the dead in a similar way of how we did 
the beginning of this movie. Lesser similar, lesser way of doing it. Or, let's see, when Namor breaks into Wakanda, he actually comes out of the water with either the dead person, the person who, who fell, who died, or a piece of clothing, like wrappings, of the person that fell, that died. Right. Now, why is this going to be interesting? Why does this help emphasize that scene? Because you already have a situation where the queen... So, the entire scene is basically about loss. And you throw... The, um, the queen's throwing rags into the fire to represent that. But Siri doesn't want to do this. She doesn't want to throw the, the rags in there, right? So what if it was like more powerful where they're having this conversation about this. Namor shows up out of nowhere. Not just in a threatening way, but in a under, like a way of understanding. He comes out of the sea with the rags, with the rags of the fallen person. And he says, essentially what he did in the movie, you guys exposed us to this world and now this is the result. I've lost someone. This is the result of someone who figured out how to make, found, find us, and they found us through this technology. And then he takes the rags and put it into the fire. Right? In a way, he kind of defiles, but honors the exact same thing everyone's doing to show them they're all on the same terms. They're the same kind of ideals. And then he says, find a scientist. I spelled that wrong, whatever. <laughs> Find the scientist that built this machine. If you don't, I'm coming after you. Now it's personal. Now we re- now this way we could actually understand Namor's plate. Um, but yeah, once you jump into Act Two, now it's like once they find out that Riri, Riri is the person who actually created this, Shiri, Shiri's like, what? <laughs> right? And now the interaction between. Shuri and Riri are is totally different. It's it's an argument between professor and student. You created what? Why? What is wrong with you? And she's like, I just did it. I thought about your your center and I wanted something to help and blah blah blah. And I didn't realize this was gonna be such a big problem. I kind of gave it to another professor and blah, blah, you know, and it just blows up to realize how deep maybe the CIA has actually infiltrated the school or whatever. Because, again, we want to make this a spy story. This needs to stay kind of like a spy thing, just like the spy genre, kind of like the original one. So we set it up in this way where it's like through just this interaction, we realize how deep the situation gets. We also introduce one other element into this. We introduce Namor's spy. Now, why is this? Later on in the movie, um, Nakia ends up poking around and finds out that there's a village. that knows about Namor and his people and its location. They haven't taken this herb that made some blue that helps them breathe underwater. So you have this connection of people from the land knowing of the people under the water, right? So what if the connection was bigger than that? What if it wasn't just like a small village? What if in a way we have this situation where it goes, he uses them in a way as like a eyes to the out to the other world. So they kind of relay what's going on in this world. So he knows what's going on. How does he know about Wakanda? And and their vibranium. How does he know all that stuff? He has spies always around, understanding what's going on. So now we have a situation where it starts with 
just Siri and Okoye going after Riri. But then all of a sudden the spy shows up out of nowhere and is shadowing them and they catch on and they start running, which then leads to Riri's shop. Um, where we actually get to see a lot of the work she's been doing. As opposed to just they look up up above them and they don't show any part of the machines or anything, you know, they don't show any part of the uh, her Ironheart suit early. That really sucked. That really, that really sucked so much. <laughs> um, we follow the events still. We do a better car chase. And what I mean by better, I mean, seriously, what happened? Who choreographed this? The worst thing is I watched the bad guys. I watched the bad guys and had better car chases in this. That's bad. Like, every time this car came up, every time they cut to a car chase, I was just enthralled. Do better. <laughs> seriously, like, seriously, Marvel, do better. Please do better. Uh, yes, they still get captured the same way. But I feel like... To add to that scene, I want... Okoye... to take Riri's Ironheart suit to dissect it and consider it like you know try to figure out what they can do something I don't know why I want the suit to be moved who knows Namor's world here's the biggest change I will put in this show the world these are shots of Atlantis and Aquaman. Everything is amazingly lit, easy to register. This is what I think when I think of seeing underwater. So, we were talking about the difference between let me make it easier for you guys to see it. We're talking about the difference between Seeing a world that looks like this and seeing a world that looks like this. Which one could you register more? I can see buildings in, in Aquaman. I can see animals in Aquaman. I see, I, I, I could register different shapes in Aquaman. In Namor's world, which I keep blanking on the name of it, this moment, this light that shines across the city is shown at the very end of the reveal of this city. Everything else is not blanketed in this light. This moment happens at the very end and then cut to next scene, which means the entire movie is in darkness. You pretty much get this. A little bit of light, close-ups of faces, not much going on. You can't really see anything. Annoying. Really, really annoying. So, I didn't really know what the, the, the fight was for. I didn't see anything. I didn't see a world. I didn't see the world that Namor was fighting for. So, well, how do we fix Act 2B? Well, when we get to Namor's world, we do a few important things. When Namor requests Siri to come over, he hands her a dress. Riri ends up making a joke about dresses in bad movies. And the very first thing we get... Sorry I'm doing this for much. I didn't prepare much for this. Okay. When you're first introduced... Oh, you're... In the movie, when we have to have this moment, Riri uh, mentions a dress in an Indiana Jones movie. This is that moment in the Indiana Jones movie. He's, she's handed a dress, told to put it on, and then talks with the bad guy. 
This isn't a situation where they're standing there at all and just doing nothing. This is actually a lunch or this is a dinner. But to sit there, eat, talk, and explain the reasoning behind the bad guy's plot. In Black Panther, we don't get anything really concrete. It, they're too, they're, they're, the director's quick to just get the scene over with for some reason. I don't understand that. So to fix it, we actually have... You have a moment, just a moment, to just show a passage of time. Have Shuri in a dress, sitting casually with Namor, and that's all you're doing. I'm not changing anything else about what happened there. It's not just, uh, here, come into this room, look at this wall, blah, exposition. No. Here's a dress. Come sit down. Have some food. You must be hungry. And being a princess, Sherry just says, okay, and understands the custom, sits down, starts eating. And they talk over a drink. And he explains his reasoning. Then he says, do you want to see my people? And then they show Namor's world. But instead of ending with this light coming up, you start with this light coming up. Illuminate the world for Siri to see. And then walk through the world and see the people. With light actually showing the, the city. As opposed to ending with light coming up and then kind of illuminating something and not getting a chance to see any of it. Nikia comes in and saves them. They get back. I'd say there's probably like... I think Act 2C kind of follows the same... It just continues the same way. Shuri comes back home. Um, they go through this general, general stuff. Akoya still loses her, her position. All that stuff still happens. It's a great scene. Keep it. Um, Namor attacks. Now, I want to double back on one thing. Let's double back right here for a second. Right? Because at the end of this moment, right? Actually, somewhere in this moment, this is what I want to do. Somewhere in this moment, add just one extra scene where we actually get to see more of the people. I've shown, I've talked about how I want parallels. Namor spy is Nakia. That's the parable. Namor and Riri are the same. These are going to be the heroes. Um, we've seen the death of Namor's mother, which later comes back with the death of the queen in the, la the last part of uh, Act 2. But I want to show the other people. I want an Okoye. So, Namor talks with Namora about should we have these people here and I think it does happen but it's not as clear as possible I think when the scene actually happens it's in the same room with Riri, uh, Shiri and um, Shiri and uh, Riri it's kind of like a throwaway line that's in a situation where they're trying to hurry up to get to this point so separate them have a moment where they're kind of just walking and they have a really good conversation about what's going on and then go into it right i think that's the problem it's we've rushed so much through these moments and we never really got a chance to know who we're talking to so have this moment happen just like in the movie when Nakia comes in and saves the day, she also kills someone. She kills a maid or something like that. Right? And just in that same moment in the movie, 
Shuri wants to stop and save them. She's freaking out trying to save them. Now, why is this important? If you in this subtle changes in the movie, this moment is the second time Namor is losing an innocent. He's already lost one person to outsiders. And if you follow, if you continue with the second path that I chose, where he brings the cloth and dumps it, he's explained that he's already lost someone to Suri and her mom. There's a connection already of understanding of what he's going through right now. So when they leave his home after being so nice to him and kill another, now it's personal. And now Namor comes in to attack. And Siri knows exactly what's about to happen. And she's freaking out. We need to protect we need to protect everyone. She goes into work mode. Ruby doesn't know what's going on. She's apologizing and Namor attacks. And yes, in the middle of all that, Queen dies. And we're good. Disperse Shiri, uh, Shiri on. Same thing like the movie. Uses the necklace, does the whole thing. Sees who she sees. Well, this is spoiler talk. Let's be honest. Killmonger is the best part. <laughs> M'Baku and Killmonger. <gasps> perfect. <laughs> but yes, this is a perfect example. Yeah, keep everything about that scene. That is great. Um, so when we hit Act 3... There was one moment that really irked me, and it's when Shiri and Riri are just blabbing exposition, and it's a waste of time. <laughs> Complete waste of time. What needs to happen in this situation is Shiri is so caught up in work and trying to f uh, fight and win this and everything that Shiri and Riri have a conversation. And they talk about loss. And this is the moment where Shiri isn't the one trying to comfort. Riri is trying to comfort Shiri. I lost my dad. The car you guys messed up? <laughs> I lost my dad, and it really took me it took a hard toll. And then the whole blip thing happened, and that really took me for a loop. And blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And she's just kind of explaining. And Shiri's not saying anything. She's too busy trying to contemplate. But they're both working. Then this is that moment where they're both working. Shuri's kind of working on the plant to try and get the powers. Riri is actually slowly creating her iron heart. They're both in different corners of that room working. But they're having a heart to heart. She is trying to reach out to Shuri. And maybe at this moment, this is where the name Iron Heart comes out. This is where the conversation happens. You know, they really have a good heart, girl. And Riri could be like, like an iron heart? <laughs> and she's like, that's a dumb joke. Something dumb like that. Just something fun like that. But show these two not working together, but working on separate projects while also being in the same room, connecting with each other. Not a dumb exposition on why Namor's body, heat, thing, whatever, and water. You know, the thing in the movie. Bring that up, but not waste our time on that. When the final fight happens on that god-awful CGI boat that is the Wakanda boat. You know, that boat. What bugged me about this... This is the only thing that bugged me about this. A lot of things bugged me about this final fight. <laughs> Don't keep all your guys up here in the thing. In the, in the boat. Like, actually consider the fight. A bunch of people are coming up and attacking you. They're in this whole fight. They want to get to you. Bring them inside, into the hall, and fight inside the hall. Have a nice close quarters combat to protect. Have it kind of like the gates of um that Lord of the Rings movie. Uh, yeah. Have it set up like the gates or like the three hundred thing, where. You have their toughest warriors in the front, just constantly protecting, right? Protecting whoever's left inside here. 
as scores of people are just attacking and attacking. And then you have your two other characters flying around trying to blast from up, uh, from the outside. Right? Put a pincher on them. But be clear about it. Because what's been happening, what, what I saw in this movie was just a lot of blurriness, a lot of faraway shots, and not of unclear direction. The closest person we could actually pay attention to was Namor flying around. And I think that's really it. So when I go back to this, I say, what didn't work for me? What didn't work for me, as I hide this part, what didn't work the first time was that you had a MacGuffin that really didn't really play a role. I said before, she feels like American Star, where her whole role is really kind of just being there. And the real story was about... Um, Strange and Wanda's grief. America was just kind of a person there, not really with any connection to anyone. And that's Riri's problem. She's actually worse than American Star because she really doesn't truly have a chance to talk to the main character. She has one lines and quips, nothing more. With subtle changes, we now, we now not only understand Riri's meaning to Shuri. Um, we introduced the concept of spies within the system, how people can exploit students. Um, we have a more meaningful reason for why Namor wants to meet, meet up with Wakanda and why he really wants to protect his, con his country because of, you know, loss of life. Everyone's losing someone in this. Actually, you could even throw in the fact that Riri has lost, like, Riri feels like she's lost confidence. She's lost the respect of a Wakandan princess, Shiri, by because she's fucked, she screwed up. Namor lost, fan, lost a, a, a citizen. Shiri is still dealing with the loss. And how to cope with it. But I think this is the best way of saving this movie. Uh, not saving. This is the best way of reinterpreting this movie. A better way that the director could have taken. Without having to change too much of the movie. Some subtle, just, just subtle shots added to the movie. To enhance the little things needed for it. Again, is it the best? I give it a seven. But it could have easily been better if you slow down the pacing of the movie. Give it time to breathe. Give everyone better connection. And then pay off certain things, man. I didn't mention this, but I've lo I love this actress in certain roles. I didn't really like her in this movie. And it's not... I don't, I don't know how the acting... I don't know if they, they told her to act a certain way. And it's a shame because, like, what they did with the character, it just seems like a bait to show that these two are in love. And now that I know more about the comics, there's more to it. Um, But... It, feels like kind of like them throwing a bone to LGBTQ, which is horrible. It's actually a bad idea. I and mean, it would have been fun to see uh, the character actually maybe hang out with the rest of the cast. Right? What if it wasn't just a Shiri Okoye story? What if it was Shiri Okoye, uh, Anika, and Riri story? What if it was a group of four women trying to help out? But in the end, all we got was, here's two little daggers I shouldn't be using, and then that never paid off in the end. I don't know. Well, tell me what you think of my idea. Share if you want to. Um, and that's it.